Fight fans watching around the world, you are watching XKO41 on XKO.TV or Facebook. If you are just now tuning in, guess what? You found out the best time to tune in because the straw weight championship title is on the line right now. Valerie Malija Soto takes on Jacqueline Walker. That's coming up next. And in tonight's main event of the evening, champion versus champion Chris the Enigma Pizarro takes on the Muay Thai champion Peter Stanonic the fifth. All of that begins now. This fight is brought to you by J. Duncanson Roofing, a family-owned company since 2007, specializing in all your roofing needs. Joined the army in 1998. Uh, I believe I heard her say earlier that she's looking like she uh, next year she's gonna retire to 20 years in the military. That's right. This man. year, I'm sorry, this year, not next year, 20 years in the military. She said she scored the highest in the army physical fitness test in basic in 1998 out of more than 200 male and female soldiers. She placed second in Fort Hood, Texas Modern uh, uh, Army at Combatives in the Bantamweight Division in 2012. The only female that made it to the finals. Made the all army team, male yeah. and female soldiers, do have to compete against each other. That's she placed stuff. second in the best warrior competition at the Italian level in 2016. She was the only female that competed in the non commissioned officer category. Scored the highest in the army physical fitness test in the army advanced leadership course in 2017 out of approximately 35 soldiers, both male and female. She's always maintained a very high standard of physical fitness. So her, so her soldiers, she says, my soldiers, yep. have an example to follow. We have no excuse because they are all younger than me. She will retire next year in 20, in August after 20 years of service. She's been, been deployed three times, and she wants to be able to have a stable life to start a family with her and her wife, who I met today. Her wife is a beautiful, supportive, uh, just wonderful person, wonderful woman, and I'll tell you, they say that you're stronger as your better half. That's the truth, man. And that is so true. That's the truth. It's always great to have somebody in your corner that understands what you've been through. They know the grind you go through. And they support your every step. Yep. That's real big that she has that support in her, uh, uh, in her background, man. And she comes in here tonight. She's ready to lay it out on the line, man. I mean, she has nothing to be afraid of. You know, nothing she, to she's been deployed three times. You know, so really my head is off to her because... I couldn't be deployed. And here she is. This is easy to her. And now we're lightening the mood a little bit now from serving our country to serving up some oogie boogie dance here <laughs> with your amateur strawweight champion of the world, Valerie Malija Soto, representing Casillas Boxing, baby. So go ahead and put your dancing shoes on because we're about to get dirty, bloody. It's about to get violent. 20 years old, five for five, sending the day walker gold to our life. Heavyweight XKO champion, you had that bit of jewelry on and it never left your side. Congratulations. Never. Thank you very much. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I know you feel it in the tip of your toes. This is XKO 41, and that 
is how you start an amateur straw weight title fight, baby. Here we are, five rounds of fighting action. This fight is brought to you by Jay Duncanson Roofing, baby. Let me tell you something right now. The number one contender in the state of Texas in the straw weight division. The contender fighting out of the next bank blue corner. She's trained in MMA. She stands five feet two inches tall and weighed in at 114 pounds. She brings to the cage two victories and zero defeats. Representing Yellow Jacket Jiu-Jitsu, she has served this country 20 years of service in the United States Army of America I give to you the number one contender Jacqueline the day Walker and of course the music doesn't stop because your champion is across the cage, fighting out of the Jim Ross red corner. She's a freestyle fighter. She stands five feet five inches tall and weighed in at 114 pounds. She brings to the cage an unblemished record of three victories and zero defeats. She represents Fitness Fight Factory. She fights out of Dallas, Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, your amateur strawweight champion of the world, Valerie Malicha Soto. Number three, Seth Fuller. Fighters, you got your instructions in the dressing room. Fight when I say fight, stop when I say stop, protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves now, go to the corner, come out fighting. You know, I'll tell you, I hype myself up. Here we go, the touch of the gloves, five rounds. Amateur strawweight title on the, on the uh, table here. Champion starts it out with an inside leg kick. Setting everything up with the jabs here. The boxing man, her jab, inside leg kick. Nice. She set up with a distraction and came with the outside leg kick. Got her against the cage. Now what she needs to do, she's doing good. Nice. Fight for an underhook turn. She needs a breakaway right now in punch. I'll tell you right now, these knees to the body are really affecting a lot of the fighters tonight. And I'll tell you, Jacqueline Day Walker not phase one bit, taking down the champion. Back to their feet. Nice. Valerie Malija Soto coming into this unblemished, untainted record. First fight in the XKO cage since earning her belt, now defending it against a very game opponent with 20 years in the service of our United States Army. Valerie did say in a couple of interviews, she said she wasn't worried about where the fight goes. She's very confident. Uh, she has a wrestling background as well. Um, but she, you know, she she likes to use her hands a lot. She likes to box, but she does a very good job at But here you can see that, man, those knees are taking a toll on you know, the daywalker. You know, the thing about the Daywalker, you know, Daywalker, I know you love saying that because you are Rashad the Daywalker, Coulter. Right on. Waiting for that hip toss. Did not go in Jacqueline's favor. Yeah, she needs to, as of right now, I believe, man, that uh, she just needs to get rid of that move. And the thing is, you know, learning her combative training with an unseasoned athlete that would definitely, definitely work. Right now, she's going to have to go ahead and pull some other strategy because we know she's prepared for the fight. But once she gets to her feet, are the hands going to fly, or right. do they need to fly? No, I agree. Like to pull the throw off like that, she, she she needs to get her hips in a little bit more. Her hips are too far out, so you know Valerie could you know see the see the throw coming from a mile away, which allowed her to get her hips away. And every time she attempts that throw, she puts herself in a worse situation. So I think she just needs to regroup right now, calm down. They have five fight. They have five rounds of fight. They just need to break away. There's no filling out process, which I love. These two girls are going right at each other, man. Uh, but right now, Valerie, she has great head position. She should get a cross face right now with her right hand. 
Circle off of the cage. Nice. She's a breakaway. The day walker, she's going to have a hard time getting that takedown because her hips are so far away. Okay. And since her hips are so far away, you can't, you have no power. All the power is in your hips and your lower body. So when your hips are that far away, then, you know, you're not going to get the takedown. She's going, she's going for the arm ball. Nice. She needs to extend her hips. If we look at the smaller clock, time clock, less than five seconds into Battery round number well. one. Nice, great first round. Battery defended the arm bar very well. Mutual respect between both athletes. When you are now speaking from one champion, watching a champion defend their belt, a lot is on you because somebody has called you out, the champ. So now you are on a platform. You have to defend that. So now you have the wolves that are hungry. But you know, as a fighter, man, that's what you want. Nobody wants no a true fighter. Nobody's looking for an easy fight. You know, it's always good, man, when you got people. Uh, you know, you know, I always tell this, man. That's job security, right? When people are calling you out, and when you're at the top of the chain, and everybody, somebody always says your name. That's just job security, man. You know, you get another opportunity. You need to do what you need to do in your habits as far as you stay in shape, cardio, be fight ready, and just know that you need to evolve because they're coming at you. You know, we talk about that going into round two. How did you like, How? what did you think, and what did you like and dislike about round one? Um, round one, uh, you know, I gave it to Valerie. Uh, Valerie, she had a little bit more cleaner strikes landed. She looked a little bit more calm. Even like here, she's setting up her boxing very well. In and out movement, not standing in the same place. Uh, she landed some great knees. Uh, what I would have liked to have seen from nice, nice takedown. There's the takedown. Nice, perfectly timed takedown. She waited for the extend, and she shot the double. Right now, she needs to calm down. She needs to shoulder pressure with her left shoulder. That's what she needs. Put the knee on the belly, cross right, and, and she, did she did it. Textbook. Valerie, the champion, could be in trouble. I don't know. Right now, Valerie needs to let go of the head because she's just holding the day walk on her. Uh, what she needs to do, she needs to push on the hips, create space, try to shrimp, uh, lift leg her bottom, one of her legs. She needs to choose a side to go to, push on the hips, choose a side to go to, lift one of the legs, and first case, worst case, try to get the half guard back. You know, here is not a time to hold on. Here's a time, that this is where you need to explode and go. This is where you're going to find out if all the explosion, all the cardio that you did in the gym is going to pay off. Right now, it looks like Jacqueline Day Walker really hooked in. Nice explosion. Watch off. She's going for the arm bar. And there she She's goes. Going for the arm bar. Going for the arm bar. The champion is defending she, it. She's nice stack. She's good defense. She stacked her. She needs to stay heavy on her. She don't need to let her. She doesn't need to try to strike. She doesn't need to try to do anything. She just needs to stay heavy. Little wiggles. Little wiggles to try to get her elbows past the hips. Right now, you, the champion right now, like you're saying, she is striking down. But you're right, she's putting the weight on. No real trouble at this immediate time. The day walker, comfortable. Nice. In the end of phase, that's a good defense, but Valerie needs to stay heavy on her. She can't allow her to, to extend that arm away from her body. She can't allow her to get any more space. She needs to forget about hitting in the face right now. See how she's hitting in the face? She needs to forget about that. She needs to apply pressure. Posture up, not posture up, but stay heavy on her, but also wiggle to try to get her elbow past her hips. Right now, we are in round number two for the amateur XKO Strawweight Championship of the world. And she needs to posture up. Right now, she needs to posture up. Posture and punch. Posture and punch. The, the champion is out of danger right now. The challenger, Jacqueline Day Walker, definitely had everything in her sights to have that belt. She needs a body, body, head. Body, but she's a posture up, body, body, head, and get out of there or either look to look to break her guard. She's going for the triangle. She actually keeps calling her legs up higher and higher. She's grabbing that shin. Uh, but Valerie, uh, right now, Valerie, she's a, she needs a posture up. Less than 10 seconds into round number two. Now strikes to the champion. The champion defending herself. The number one contender still going for that arm bar. And that is round number two. Great round. Great round for the challenger, man. She looked good. She kept going for submission, stayed busy. Um, she, one thing that I'm noticing is she, she's hunting for that arm bar. That's like the third time so far she's gone. She went for it in the first round, and she went for it twice. And she had it deep. 
at the beginning of this round. So she's looking for that arm bar. So if I was Valerie's corner, Valerie's corner needs to be sure to tell her, hey, man, she's hunting for that arm bar. Be sure you protect your arm at all costs because that's her go-to. Here we go for the instant replay. Nice Walk us through it, Rashad. She bounced, she did it. She exploded like she was supposed to, but when she exploded, she extended her arm, which allowed uh, which allowed Jacqueline to control her arm and get her hips around and get her leg across the face and set up the arm bar. So right here, Valerie did a good job by staying heavy on her. Um, but, you know, Valerie did a good job in her defending. So let's see uh, what their corners uh, told them to do. Let's see. I, I would like to see a little bit more striking from uh, from Jacqueline to set up some takedowns a little bit more. But that last takedown she had, beautiful. She set her up on a blast double once she extended on the overhand right. And she took her down. Perfect setup. Round number three in the white trunks. The challenger, Jacqueline Day Walker. And the champion in the black Valley Tudo shorts, Valerie Malija Soto. Valerie has good movement. Notice how she's cutting angles in and out, in and out. Um, you know, I think uh, I think in her head right now is she's thinking, don't get too much overextended on that right hand because that last time she got taken down with that blast double. The Valerie has good in and out. She sets up the jab. She sets up everything off her jab very well which we was talking about earlier, is the jab is the most underutilized punch in MMA. So Valerie has a great jab, and I think Valerie can find a little bit more success if she puts everything she wants to do behind that jab. Right now, if I was her, I'd just break away, break away and strike. You know, one of the things that you're talking about, that head movement, the foot, if you just watch the striking, that's coming from, of course, uh, Genesis MMA. I hope I'm saying that. Rafael Casillas. Rafael Casillas. Yeah, Rafael Casillas. Casillas. I'm sorry, Rafael. Rafael Casillas. I apologize. Name, you know, Rafael. I had a chance to speak to him today. Yeah. Uh, you know, Rafael. I apologize. <laughs> Fitness Fight Factory. Rafael. You know, one of the best in the business. Next to, I'd say, right with you know, striking coach Duran Lamb. They both have their own techniques, and they are really utilizing that in their fighters tonight rafael casillas is being shown his, his ability to strike right now in the clinch here yeah body locks if I, it's, it's very clear what they want to do uh jacqueline wants to grab she wants to put her against the cage try to wear it down but see right here it's a lot of space she knows she's opening herself up to knees right now um but good head position see how valerie's fighting for head she's trying to get her forehead on her chin great head position way to punch her on the break jab one two nice Nice knee. You know, I'll tell you, both of these both of these fighters are really doing it the right way. They clinch. They get they get the hips out to avoid a takedown, and then they strike. Yeah. Very strategic, both of them. They're not going in there sloppy. They're not going in there unseasoned. Two fights for one, three fights for the other. You would think they both had possibly eight fights apiece. Yeah, that just goes to show the culture, the coaching and the level of the gym that they come from, you know, the training partners that they have and their willingness to learn. Um, you know, a coach can only tell you so much, but it's, it's completely up to you. It's completely up to you to put the work in and to learn and to, you know, nice, nice overhand right. You know, Coach Jacqueline. Jacqueline Walker went for a slick move there. It backfired. Got to her feet. Thank oh, God. Nice right what hand. a hook. Taking some abuse. But when she throws that right hook to the champion, the champion answers back right now, unleashing punishment on the number one contender in the corner as we go into the fourth round here in just a couple of seconds. Yeah. Well, one by four probably was the best round, round yes. of the night. Well, we, the one thing we know about Valerie, Valerie, we know she go five rounds. And we know she thrives on war. She had a great fight with Desiree on this. Her and Desiree was going back and forth. But we, know, from what we saw from, from Valerie's last fight, Valerie has the cardio to push through. Right. She has the mindset. She's not going to back down. She's going to come forward. So uh, we haven't uh, been able to see a lot from Miss Jackson. Um, you know, so we don't know how she does in later rounds in the fight. But one thing we do know about Valerie is that Valerie will push forward. See, she was going there for, for the flying arm bar. For a flying arm bar. And it just it just really backfired. I mean, timing is everything. But she did not sustain any damage. She was able to get back to her feet. And that in itself, yeah. to be able to range back, grab, holster up, get your feet underneath you. And that's when this later in the round, yeah. it is so difficult to keep your feet underneath you. It is. Your legs are heavy. They're tired. You're thinking about the man rushing in, trying to 
punch you or kick yep. you as soon as you get your hand up off the mat. So she, she did a textbook get up, hand out, you know, posture up, bell. So she did a great job, man. Really looking forward to round number four. Rashad, I know that you see this type of energy in your fights in the UFC under the bright lights. Uh, for the younger fighters that are coming up, what advice do you have for them when you see a fight like this of this magnitude? Um, man, you really don't know what's, what's in you until you're actually put in the situation, right? So if I would tell anybody anything, it's train in the worst situation. Like, train where you're not comfortable at all. Train where you don't like being. Train in your worst area. So if, you, if you're a good striker, you need to train twice as much on the ground and wrestling or getting up or, or you know what I'm saying? Like, that, that's what I would tell in cardio, man. You know, and listen to your coaches. Your coaches have a great game plan for a reason. So I would say cardio, train with your train, train your weaknesses nice. Battery nice. Weight session, stop the flurry by shooting in for the takedown. And really, you know, great job to Valerie. Definitely on the offensive. Great defending the takedown. She just went ahead and put her hips in, locked up, made herself feel like she was much heavier than what she is. To prevent that takedown, but I'll tell you, the fight in both of these women just yeah, you can't take anything away from her, man. You know, no. Jacqueline, she you know, she's coming to fight, she's creative, she's looking for different ways to win. She has a great overhand right as well. She's caught Valerie a few times with an overhand right. Jericho, that's the third attempt that Jacqueline has gone for. It worked about 25% right there. But you know, it, it worked it, if you're very high level at it, you know it's yeah. not gonna it's not gonna work against um, a lot of the guys, you know. So that's one of those things that you know you hit the move every now and then, but you have to have the, the perfect technique. The timing has to be right. You have to hit it when somebody is pushing into you, not when you're just standing there and you both guys both of you guys are in a stalemate. Like you have to you have to set it up. Like you have to push against them, and then once you have to let them get comfortable enough to think that they're. Um, uh, overpowering you while you're going backwards and then boom, then you hit the throw. You're using their momentum against them. You know, a lot of that with jiu-jitsu and, uh, you know, we, we go back to talking about the female fighter, Ronda Rousey, you know, the elite who was so great at judo. Yep. You know, you put your hips, as soon as you feel your hip go into that, to your opponent's hip, you know whether you have the apex or the inertia to really bring it over, but then if you don't, unless you have, like with you, incredible upper body strength, she's going for the to where you can just throw it over. Talk to us about this Kimura. Yeah, she's going. She's a step over. She's got it. Well, she doesn't have it, but she just needs to be patient. She's a wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Jacqueline trying to fight against it here. Nice. She's the, now. Now she's yep. She has. She stepped over. She's a softener up a little bit. Punch hit to the yeah. There she goes. Punches to the body. Trying to work those kidneys. But Jacqueline, she's fighting it. You know, she's fighting it. She's trying to, she's trying to connect her hands to keep uh, Valerie from. Now Valerie just bailed on it. She took her back. Trying to take the back. <laughs> there we going. go. We are about to go into round number five, the last and final round of this amateur strawweight championship. But here at XKO 41, I'm Antonio Perkins. If you're just now tuning in. We are about to embark in the final round. I'm joined with UFC fighter, Mr. Rashad, the Daywalker Coulter. Yes, sir. Got to make it official. I'll put the Mr. on it. Thank you, man. Thank <laughs> you. I appreciate that. You know, remember when we, I had recently went to uh, my girls and friends. We went to uh, Vegas. I saw a guy who looked just like you by the pool. <laughs> All right, talk to us about this replay. All right, well, see right here. See, see how they were just standing head to head? There was, there was no pushing or pulling. You have to have the, you have to, Give to get you have you have to your your opponent has to be pushing into you for that throw to work. You can't just hit it unless you step deep and across. You, you like uh, Jacqueline needs to get her. She needs to step all the way across and get her hips below Valerie's hips. Load her up on her hips and on her back, and then control the arm, and then hip toss her over. So right now, if you're judging this fight minus this round, where are you? Are you unanimous? Are you split? Who are you siding for? Um, I, I, it's a close fight, but I'm going to have to give it right now to Valerie. I think Valerie has landed more on the feet, um, and she's actually um, controlled the positions on the ground a little bit more. Um, you know, and, and it's not because she's taking it to the ground. It's because, um, you know, Miss Jacqueline has 
giving her that opportunity by doing the arm throw, then she ends up putting herself in bad positions. It's not because Valerie put her in bad positions, but, you know, hey, hats off to Valerie. That's what fighting is about. So once she puts herself in bad positions, Valerie just capitalizes on right. those positions and she controls her and she causes damage for a little bit. Jacqueline scrambles. Uh, nice overhand right. Jacqueline scrambles, you know, to get herself out of danger, but... Both fighters looking very fresh. You would think this is round number two, not the, 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 the fifth and final round. I mean, you talk about cardio. They have cardio for days. They're in great shape. Hey, man, that's 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 a good thing about being a, being a smaller weight. You know, <laughs> us heavyweight guys, you know, we get in there. Yeah. It takes a whole lot more energy, man. Those guys is like 155 and below. You well, know, we, we wish they had their cardio. I'll tell you what. I don't think that we will ever see Rashad the Daywalker Coulter in a bantamweight fight in the UFC. <laughs> Never. Uh, you may have to chop, chop off a leg or two. Uh, that's not going to happen. Right on, man. <laughs> nah, I can't tell you. I don't think I've been 140 pounds since 12, 10, 10 or 12 years old, man. Oh, man. Yeah, so right here, you know, I think Valerie just uh, – I think Valerie's just, you know, I, I think she's content with saying, hey, I can wrestle too. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not intimidated by your strength. I'm not intimidated by, you know, you trying to grapple. I can stand here in the pocket with you. We can go strength for strength. And uh, this is a good dirty boxing fight. Like, dirty boxing. Like, mm. nice. Uppercuts, overhand rights. They're both getting some clean shots. See that? Oh, Body they shots. They're mm -hmm. both going for broken this last round, which is good. And that's what you want to see at a championship fight. The challenger going for broke. The champion going for broke, dirty boxing. This is what the Rocky Balboa movies are all about. Or if you had ever seen Rashad the Daywalker's first fight in the UFC, then you know by the definition of a heart in the yes, Webster's sir. Dictionary is that fight. And I'll tell you right now, Rashad, they may have been watching your fight just before they came out here to get some tips about what it has to be to have heart. I would tell you something. Man. Girls are tough. Girls can scrap, man. Girls put on some of the best fights that you've seen. Nice brawl. Now she needs to break away. I think she should break away and just, and just strike. How committed How committed nice. are they to not breaking away? How committed to this clinch are they? they? They're both working. They're both scoring points, inflicting damage. Not enough to take the other out, but at what point do you break away from the clinch? If you see it's not working. Hey, listen. If your cardio allows you to do it, stay there as long as you're causing damage. You know, but you know, the more you wrestle, the more you grapple, the more tired you are. But this is this is uh, this is just goes to show you how this is great it. shape these girls are in. What a fight! We're about to go to the judges' scorecard, and I will give you the results in just one second. Good job. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for five rounds in your amateur straw weight championship fight as we go to the judges' scorecard. The judges have scored the bout 49 46. 49, 46, and 50 to 45. Your winner by unanimous decision. And still the undisputed amateur strawweight champion of the world, Valerie Malika Soto. I'm standing here to the champion, still Valerie. That was one hell of a war. Every time you step in this cage, it is always a war. You leave it all in here. You don't leave nothing else left. Tell us, a, man, just, wow. Tell us what was going through your mind, because you all were just standing still the first couple rounds. It was a fight. Well, I really have to pee right now. <laughs> and she didn't make it easy, so, you know, but I just listen to my corner, and I look over at my parents all the time and just see that they're pushing me every single day my coaches are pushing me every single day so that keeps me going now valerie you all were exchanging blows but man you were giving some devastating knees when y'all were in the clinch and stuff like that T could you hear it could you hear her grasping for air or anything like that no i was just thinking man i want to knock her down like lauren binjard knocked her opponent down but maybe next time 
Wow. Valerie, congratulations. Great job. Everybody give it up for Valerie Mao Iha Soto.